What's the story warning, Gloria? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Married at First Sight, Season 17, Episode 21, Climbing Down from Decision Day. Before I get into the review, I want to give out a couple of suggestions for Lifetime, um, uh, Lifetime, Married at First Sight producers, whoever's in charge of this fiasco. First of all, please hire real matchmakers, people who are certified match because there is such a thing, people who are certified matchmakers, people who are in the business of matchmaking, people who understand, you know, relationship dynamics, couple dynamics, please hire people like that to put these couples together. Um, I don't know if the talent Dr. Pia, Dr. Pepper, Pastor Cal, the, the, I consider them talent. I don't consider them, you know, real professional matchmakers on this show. I don't know what's going on in their real life and their real professions, but on this show, I don't see these three as real matchmakers. I think after the casting directors have decided who they want to be on the show, then from that pool of possibilities the experts the three experts come in and decide who they want to be on the show or whatever that process get rid of it take it out I need real authentic matchmakers working behind the scenes or in front of the camera I don't care but I need real people real professional matchmakers who are trying to put a real relationship together who are really looking at these individuals and figuring out who they would best be matched with there are such there are people like that real professional certified licensed matchmakers that's what i need working behind the scenes number two separate the couples no more living in the same apartment complex for them to start developing um these uh alliances i guess i, I don't like that the fact that the 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 women on this show and the men too that they all want to get all clicky and they want to gang up together and you know all, all this stuff that's going on behind the scenes because we're developing these relationships off camera and we don't really see exactly what's going on until you know uh there's like a big problem or so i get rid of all of that i want all the couples to live separately the fact that they have the opportunity to exchange notes um to talk about each other's relationships exchange information um how how information about a couple travels to other couples therefore making other people give their opinions and get super duper involved in other people's relationships all that mess has got to stop that intermingling of couples intermingling of friendships and couples and um cliques and and groups and all all of that has to stop all that has to stop because in this episode, you know, we hear a lot about certain people controlling other people being super involved in other people's relationships when they have no relationships of their own, um, their own spouses, they don't even live with their own spouses, but they have a lot to say about what goes on with other people's relationships. All that has to stop. Number three, if you don't want to live with your spouse on the show, get the hell off the show. We don't want to see you. All of the Claire's, um, all of the Alyssa's, all of these people who just want to be on TV, even though they ain't got nothing going on in their own relationships, get rid of them. We don't want them. When I say Alyssa, I'm talking about Alyssa and Chris in the previous, you know, however many episodes, I mean, however many seasons ago. People who don't want to live with their spouses, go away. Go away. I don't care if you voluntarily don't want to live with them or circumstances have happened and you can't live with them. Like, for example, in this situation, well, Claire and Cameron had already made up their mind that they didn't want to live together. Cameron had wanted to move out. So as soon as he made that decision to move out, he should have we should have seen no more of them. So if you don't want to live with your spouse other than a situation like someone got hurt or they're sick or they're in the hospital or something like that, I understand you can stay. But if y'all have made the decision that you don't want to continue on in your marriage and you don't want to live together get on out we don't need you you're not adding anything to it in fact you're making things even worse because you're upset and bitter about your own situation you want to start mingling in other people's situations claire now let's get into the review so it starts off with emily claire and becca they're all together emily makes a statement about how none of the ex-husbands have um, reached out to them and I'm thinking to myself, why would your exes reach out to y'all? They barely had any interest in y'all when they were living with y'all and married to y'all. All of a sudden, you expect them to have this, you know, um, this interest and curiosity about what y'all are doing after decision day. They don't give a damn. They're not, they're not reaching out because they don't care. They didn't care then when y'all were married and living together. They sure as hell don't care now. Moving on from there. Becca and Claire. Another thing about this episode. 
I'm not, in, I was so not interested in all of these conversations, reliving the traumas of their marriages. I'm not interested in any of that. Talking about, we, we were there with y'all. We saw what went down. We saw what happened. So if y'all sitting around constantly talking about what happened during your marriages, boring, disinterested, I don't like it, but I understand that y'all need content for the show. Y'all need to fill up you know, space because we're still in it with Michael and Chloe. So we have to see Michael and Chloe to the end and it just can't be a whole entire hour or an hour and a half of Michael and Chloe. So I understand why we're seeing all these other people and, you know, having to watch them talk about their relationships. I get it, but it's still boring. Becca and Claire get together. Becca says that Austin told her he didn't see anything wrong with him hanging out with this producer or being friends with this producer. So Becca says that she cannot be around someone who is like that. I don't know the situation between Austin and this producer. I have no idea what the hell is going on because nobody wants to be truthful and honest and transparent on camera. So much is happening or so much had happened off camera that we were not privy to and we're trying to put the pieces together based on what's being said the little little tidbits that they give us on camera I don't know what the hell's going on I don't know if he was trying to see this producer I don't know if he was just you know extra friendly with this producer I don't even know if there was anything going on between Austin and the producer because if you go on reddit there's a thread on reddit that says that it was actually Brandon and the producer who were having a relationship or who were interested in each other or whatever but because Brandon did not want the wrath of Emma um he had Austin uh say that or he had Austin make it look like it was him that was with this producer or, or whatever that's what they think on Reddit I don't agree with that at all because Becca had said in last week's episode that one of the problems in her marriage was the fact that there was something going on between Austin and this producer this producer played a factor in the demise of her marriage this is what Becca said so I don't think it was Brandon and the producer I do think that it was Austin and the producer but like I said whoever the producer was with we don't know what the hell was going on because there's not enough information given to us on camera for us to decipher so she says that if he can't see that there's something wrong with him, you know, hanging out with this producer, being friends with this woman, um, that she doesn't want to be around him. Becca and Emily, they talk about they're gonna, how they're going to work on themselves before they put themselves back out there. Okay, good for y'all. Austin. So Austin comes back home. His roommates, they're waiting for him. And his roommate wanted to know, okay, exactly what went down between you and Becca? What happened? And so Austin tells his roommate that he did lie to Becca. I'm assuming he's talking about the producer thing. I have no idea. He says that he did lie to Becca and that when he reached out to Becca, it went really bad because Becca basically told him that she wanted nothing to do with him. And because he didn't apologize right away, um, she really wanted to cut everything off with him. She wanted no contact with him. She she blocked him on all of her social media. So he says that it really went bad and he probably should never had even called her. Moving on from there, Brennan, he's hanging out with his friends. So they're at a bar and while they're waiting for their drinks, Brennan makes a comment about the bartender being cute. I don't know why they felt the need to put that in. We've been knowing that Brennan had no interest in Emily. We've been knowing that Brennan was probably you know, as soon as they landed back in Denver from their honeymoon, he probably was already back on his, you know, dating apps trying to find the next best thing. So the fact that they added that in, I don't know why they did that. So the friend says, I thought you said divorce wasn't going to be an option for you. And I think as long as he wanted to stay in the marriage, he wasn't going to let divorce be an option for him. But if he didn't want to be in the marriage, I think divorce was very much an option for Brennan. But he does look hypocritical because in the beginning, that's all he talked about, how divorce was not going to be an option. He was going to stick it through. He was going to work on his marriage. He was going to do whatever he had to do to keep his marriage going. But he was like the first one to bail out. Brennan says that this process has taught him to ask more questions and hopefully be more honest yourself. Brennan tells, um, he, so he, for whatever reason, he's still stuck on this um, camera diary thing. So during the season, um, Emily had said that Aust that um, Brandon wanted her to delete 
one of her or some of her camera diary entries and it was her proving that this is how controlling he is that he was even controlling my own camera diaries by wanting me to delete the things that I have recorded and so Brennan feels the need to give his side of the story even though we've all moved past it and we all don't care anymore um he says that he had heard he had seen some of her footage and she was really going in on him and he claims that whatever the hell she was saying about him it wasn't based in truth Brennan between you and Emily and basically everybody else on this cast we the viewer have no idea what the hell the truth is it doesn't matter what the hell Emily said on her diary cam we don't know what's true what's not true y'all hated each other so much it's possible she could have lied it's possible she could have exaggerated but you were also so mean and horrible to her it's possible she was telling the truth we have no idea because all of y'all are faking the funk you most of all, Brennan, were faking the funk by trying to act one way on camera, another way off camera. And even um, you really you were controlling because whenever Dr. Pia came to talk to y'all, you never wanted to say exactly how you felt about Emily. Um, you always beat around the bush when it came to, you know, are you attracted to her or not? How do you really feel about her? Do you see a future with her? You kept on beating around the bush, never wanted to give a clear and concise answer. When Emily would give a clear and concise answer, you you didn't like it. You didn't like what she had to say. But then when the question, when, you know, when we were turning to you to add something to it, you went mom, you didn't want to say anything. So who knows what was true? Who knows what wasn't true? But the bottom line is we've all moved on from the diary camp thing. We don't really care anymore. So the friend says to Brandon, you need to reach out to Emily. He's like, why don't you, why do I need to reach out to her? And his friend says, because you need closure. He's like, I don't need closure. We said all we had to say to each other. Moving on from there. Let's talk about Becca and Austin. So Becca is FaceTiming her friend. Austin is hanging out with a couple of his friends and she admits to being too demanding and having too high of an expectation of Austin. So when she said that she was demanding because she had also mentioned, I don't know if it was, I think it was with Emily. She had mentioned that she was also controlling because she was like, oh, maybe I was a little bit too controlling. And now to her own friend, she says, oh, maybe I was a little bit too demanding. So the things that Austin has said about her, there was some truth to it of her being like a micromanager being really controlling she admits to it she was controlling and she was demanding so she's telling her friend that you know maybe if I if I wasn't so demanding maybe if I didn't have these really high expectations of him the outcome would have been different her friend was like no Becca the outcome still would have been the same so her friend was trying to tell her don't second guess your decision don't second guess you know um where you're, where you're at right now you don't need to be with him don't go back. Don't doubt the decision that you made to, to get away from him. But who knows? So it seems like Becca is having some serious doubts about her decision to divorce um, Austin. If I said Brendan, I'm sorry. I meant Austin. She's having uh, some serious doubts about um, divorcing Austin or wanting to divorce Austin and moving away and, you know, moving on from him. And I'm just thinking to myself, Becca, you were miserable the whole entire time. Okay, though, practically, since I came back from y'all's honeymoon, Becca, you were miserable. What are you second guessing? And then for her to act like, well, if only production wasn't around, if we weren't in front of the cameras all the time, you know, no, because the, uh, the, the Austin that you had, who was away from the cameras was the Austin that you did not like. That was the Austin that you complained about the most was the one that was away from production. He was only decent to you when he was on camera. So I'm not understanding why she's second guessing herself or why she's having doubts. Austin tells his friends that he is willing to work it out. I don't know what the hell is wrong with Austin. I don't know what the hell is wrong with Austin. If you really wanted to be with Becca and he thought that, you know, they could have a life together. Why was she so miserable the whole entire time that she was with you? And if she was miserable for no reason, Okay, if she was unreasonably miserable, then why do you want to be with a person like that, Austin? <sighs> Lauren and Orion. Y'all, when it comes to Lauren and Orion filming together, I can only say that the reason why she's allowing to be, allowing herself to be within a 10 mile radius of this man is because the producers are telling her to. I can't imagine someone as intelligent and as with it as Lauren would want to give Orion 
half a second of her time. So the fact that they went out there to go play archery together, whatever the hell they were doing, and that they were having a conversation about the possibility of reconciling, it's only because I'm thinking the producers are like, hey, the show is still going on. Um, if you still want to get paid, you're going to have to continue with these scenes. That's the only thing that I can think of. So they're sitting down talking and um, Lauren tells Orion that she's doing really great. She says she's doing better now than she was doing before even before even coming on the show. She's doing she's in a really good place right now. He says he is as well. Um, then she asks him if she is dating. And he says he's not dating because he wants to see what more is going on between the two of them. He basically is like, you know, he's not finished with Lauren. And he told her, I'm not really done with us. And she's like, oh, you know, she, I think she asked him point blank. Are you, are you basically saying that you want us to reconcile? You want us to try again? And he basically does. And so Lauren says that she's willing to have a conversation about that. Now she's not going to make a decision. She's not going to, you know, rush back with him, but she is willing to have a discussion about it. Lauren, no, no, absolutely not. No, 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 um, no, no. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm not going to say too much on Lauren and Orion, because like I said, I don't know if this is what she really wants to do, you know, to spend this much time with them and film with them like this, or if it's because the producers are telling her to, in order to fill up all this space that they have, because we're still going along with Michael and Chloe. But the fact, okay, I, like I said, I'm not going to say too much because I really don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Moving on from there. Michael and Cameron. So Michael and Cameron are talking on the phone. Michael calls Cameron and he wants to know how Cameron is doing after that um, group event where, you know, him and Claire got into it. And he basically talked about how Claire was controlling him the whole entire marriage. So Cameron says he's doing fine. He says that, um, he didn't like the fact it was really triggering for him at the group event that Becca was setting up this theme of the men trying to silence the women. And he says he was never that type of a husband to Claire. He never was wanting her to be silenced. He says, I encouraged her to always speak her mind. So that really triggered me that Becca would try to paint this picture of me trying to silence my wife because he's like, no, I never did that. I was not the kind of a husband. He also talks about how Claire was the one that was the most controlling in the marriage. Not only was she controlling Cameron, but she was also controlling Emily. Um, he even called her Emily's puppet master because everything that Emily did was orchestrated by Claire. And this is the reason why the couple should not be living together. They should all live separately. They should not know what's going on with the other couples. Um, I understand that at some point they all want to, the producers want them all to get together. That's fine, but do it only once and one time only. Nobody have each other's phone numbers to call other couples to figure out what's going on. They should all be separate because I don't like how certain couples or certain individuals influence other individuals. Then he gave um, Michael some advice. I think he told him to concentrate more on the relationship than just the, the, this, this, this thing about being married. And if y'all really are meant to be married, you know, the whole marriage thing will come back around. I think that's what he was trying to tell Michael. Oh, he also mentioned that Claire lied to him in order to get some type of a reaction from him. I totally see that. I totally see that and that you know, I do see Claire as being controlling. I do see her as being a controlling person moving on to Becca and Emily. So they go to take these aura photos. The photos look exactly the same. You would think that different people would have different auras, but their auras were the same. So the psychic then points out to um, Emily that she really nailed it when it came to Brendan, her and Brendan's relationship. If this is if, if any of this is even true I don't know she could I, I, I don't know what's going on so the psychic said that her relationship with Brandon started off all hot and heavy and then it cooled off as soon as they started living together that there was a, a complete mood shift in Brandon and um it wasn't that hot and heavy anymore so Emily was like yeah you know she was right about that and let's not forget when they were on their honeymoon Brandon was so enthusiastic about Emily he talked about building an empire with her 
Remember that when they were still in uh, Mexico, he talked about building an empire with Emily. That's how into Emily he was, unless he was faking the funk in front of the cameras. Becca once again talks about her decision um, with uh, what's his name? So many people, so many names. Becca also told she once again talks about how she's having second thoughts about divorcing Austin. Girl, don't do it don't do it if you are seriously having second thoughts about your decision to divorce austin then becca you are a glutton for punishment and you are a serious pick me i know that she is very attracted to austin and i don't know if that's what's making her have these second second thoughts and doubting herself i know she's very attracted to austin um Girl, did, did you not, did you not remember how on the day of decision day, when y'all both said yes to one another, he went out with his friends? You would think, because decision day is such a big deal on this show. Everybody talks about decision day. From the time that they get married, they're talking about decision day. It is such a big deal. So the day came, y'all both said yes. And instead of relishing in this, this, you know, this next chapter of your lives, of your relationship, he'd rather go hang out with his damn castmates. Like, why are they so damn interesting? Why would they be more interesting than his own wife? Did you forget that, Becca? And you're talking about how you want to go back to him? All the issues that they had, intimacy issues, communication issues, optics, the producer, you're going to sit on this, you're going to be, you're going to on camera in front of the whole world say that you're having second thoughts about breaking up with Austin. I don't have much to say about Chloe and Michael um, other than. It seems like Michael is kind of um, seeing things a little bit differently now, possibly. It started when they went to the animal sanctuary and Chloe told him that eventually she wants to have her own animal sanctuary where she's going to have like a whole bunch of animals to take care of. And he doesn't know if he's ready for all of that. He can take, you know, taking in a couple of dogs and cats here and there, but like an entire farm full of animals. Um, he's not sure about that. Um, she also talks about fostering children. She says she wants to foster like five at a time. He's not sure about that either. So his whole, his whole issue really is that he's on board with the idea of animal sanctuaries and fostering children. He's just not on board with the scope of it. Um, he's not sure that he can do it on the level that she wants to do it on like a big piece of property, a whole bunch of animals, a whole bunch of foster kids. And he wants, and she wants all the foster kids to have their own bedrooms. So he's not sure if he's you know willing to do all of that. A kid, uh, one or two kids, fine. A couple of animals, fine, but not on her scope. He's not ready for all of that. Then for their one month anniversary, which is really, really sad and pathetic, um, Lifetime is really treating them like the redheaded stepchildren by putting them in this disgusting pool of sewage water, which is what it looked like to me. It was supposed to be a hot tub. It was so small. The water was so filthy looking i don't think it was actually filthy i don't know what they put in it to give it that color or if it was just the color of the actual hot tub that made the water look like that but it looked disgusting they look like they look like they were sitting in sewage or in a, uh, in a bowl of soup or something it was disgusting and so when they were having their one month anniversary and this is all that we saw of their one month anniversary normally when it comes to the one month anniversary they're doing something on a grander scale the couples are like going out to a really romantic dinner or they're going out on a boat ride a horse ride they're doing something bigger and better and much more romantic than sitting in their own bacteria and dead skin cells in this tepid lukewarm water in this super tiny teacup of a hot tub so this is where Claire asks him if decision day was tomorrow what would you say and he says that he would need um 
more information. He says he has insufficient data right now to give a decision. Then, oh, we also find out that they're having sex. Um, it was a really easy transition for them after they went to the adult um, sex shop. So they're having sex. I guess it's wonderful for both of them. And then Dr. Pia comes over and we find out, oh, we are reminded because we already knew that Michael had not yet told his mother that he was even married. And he doesn't want to tell his mom until after decision day. And Dr. Pia was really surprised about that because she was like, you know, why wouldn't you want to tell your mom that you're married? And he said that, you know, why put my mom through unnecessary stress and strife if I don't really know exactly where this is going to, this relationship is going to go. And Chloe interrupted and said, you know, I agree with him. Me and him, we did have a conversation about this and I totally support him and not telling his mom. So then Dr. Pia was like, oh, okay, well, if, you know, if you're cool with that and he's cool with that, then I ain't got nothing to say about it. Then Dr. Pia said that, um, what else did they talk about? They mentioned something, oh, moving in together. So they did have a discussion previously and they brought it up with Dr. Pia that they're not going to be living together like full time. Their leases are up at different times, six months apart. So Michael has suggested that let's live together like for the majority of the week and then one or two days out of the week, we go back to our own places or, or whatever. And so it seemed like Chloe was okay with that. So Dr. Pia asked them, like, why would you want to do that? You're all married. Why don't you want to live together full time? And Michael said, because, you know, we do need time to recharge. We need time to recharge. And he also had brought up, not with Dr. Pia, but previously when he brought this up to Chloe and she was kind of like, oh, I thought we we're going to be living together. He was like, no, we can, you know, take a, a day or two apart. And then he reminded her, you know, you did you left for a couple of days or however long she was gone and I supported you in that and I understood why you did it that you needed to like you know reset or recharge and I supported you no one else understood everybody was looking at me crazy that my own wife moved out but I understood where you were coming from and so I guess when he said it like that she really had nothing to say other than okay I agree so Dr. Pia doesn't understand that and she, she suggests to them that they do need to live together full time and then Dr. Pia said that, you know, she felt like there was something inauthentic about them. She says something like, um, I'm getting the feeling that this is not y'all's genuine self. Um, if y'all are putting on for the camera, I get it. I just hope that y'all are not putting on for each other, that y'all are being authentic with one another. And Chloe was like, I'm very authentic. I don't give a damn what anybody has to say or what they think about me. I'm being my true self I am being authentic I think Michael and Chloe are probably the most authentic people on this show um Dr. Pia you couldn't even call out the fact you couldn't even tell that um Austin was being inauthentic you couldn't even figure that out Dr. Pia <laughs> you had no idea so how are you going to call out Michael and Chloe your authentic radar is completely dysfunction it's not working that's all I have to say. This episode was sorry. Absolutely sorry from beginning to end. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it on your way out. Please don't forget to rate the video if you like this content and subscribe to my channel. And I'll definitely talk to you later. Bye.